as introduction to quadratic functions. At the end of this video, you will be able to model real-life situations using quadratic functions and represent a quadratic function using a table of values, graph, and equation. For a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, which is discussed to you in the previous module. To be a quadratic function, simply replace zero by y or f of x to form the quadratic function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. In other words, a quadratic function is a second-degree polynomial, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, or f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a must not be equal to zero. Why is that a must not be equal to zero? Once a becomes equal to zero, the quadratic term ax squared will be equal to 0. So, the remaining terms will be bx plus c. And y is equal to bx plus c is not a quadratic function. It is now a linear function. So, remember that a must not be equal to 0. So, let's start discussing quadratic function using this simple problem. Mr. San Miguel is renovating his house. Before the lockdown, he managed to buy square tiles with five sizes. He wants to determine the area of each tiles. Let's help him. So this is the illustration of the tiles with five different sizes. So the smallest tiles, the side is 3. The next tiles, the side of this tile measures 6. Next is 9. Fourth tiles, the side measures 12. And the biggest tiles measures 15. Based on the problem, we are asked to find the area of a square and we all know that the area of a square is multiplying the sides or getting the square of its sides so in symbol a or the area is equal to the square of its side so a is equal to s squared using this table we're going to find the area of each tiles so if the measurement of the side is 3, so to get the area, just get the square of 3, the answer is 9. And if the side is 6, the area will be 36. And if the side is 9, the area will be 81. And if the side is 12, the area will be 144. And lastly, if the given side is 15, the area of the largest or the biggest tile will be 225. So based on the given problem, the area or A of the tiles depends on the length of its side S. So we have two variables involved here, the area and then the side. So again, side here will be the independent variable and the area is the dependent variable. And the equation A is equal to S squared is an example of quadratic function. So let's have more examples of quadratic function in terms of an equation. First, f of x is equal to 2x plus 5x squared minus 9. Though it is not written in standard form, the first term is the linear term followed by the quadratic term. It's still a quadratic function because the degree 
of this polynomial function is 2. y is equal to 3x multiplied by negative x plus 2. It is still a quadratic function. Why? When we apply the distributive property, 3x multiplied by negative x will give us negative 3x squared. And 3x multiplied by 2 is positive 6x. So the result will be y is equal to negative 3x squared plus 6x. And it's also a second degree polynomial function. Next, the third example, a is equal to b squared minus 7b. It's still a quadratic function because the degree is 2. Though we are not using x and y, it's still a quadratic function because we still have two variables involved. b, which is the independent variable, and a, the dependent variable. And these are uh, examples of not quadratic function y is equal to 7x plus 5. It is not a quadratic function since the degree here is 1. The high exponent of the variable of the independent variable here is 1. Next, f of x is equal to the absolute value of 2x. And the last example, y is equal to 5x cubed minus 9. It is not a quadratic function since the degree of this polynomial function is 3. Now that you know how to identify quadratic functions given an equation, we will now proceed with identifying a quadratic function from a given set of ordered pairs or table of values. Before we proceed to that discussion, let us first define table of values. A table of values is a graphic organizer or chart that helps you determine two or more points that can be used to create your graph. Let us use the table of values in the previous problem to discover a pattern. So this is our previous table of values in the given problem earlier. Now I want you to get the differences in S. Again, S here is the independent variable. So let us subtract from your right to your left. So 15 minus 12 is 3, 12 minus 9 is 3, 9 minus 6 is 3, and 6 minus 3 is 3. So as you can see, the differences are equal. Next, we're going to get the first differences in A. A is the dependent variable. Darn it, 25 minus 144 is 81. 144 minus 81 is 63. 81 minus 36 is 45, and 36 minus 9 is 27. So they are not equal. Next is to get the second differences in A. 81 minus 63 is 18. 63 minus 45 is 18. And 45 minus 27 is 18. Now, in the second differences in the dependent variable, the answers are all equal. Therefore, in a quadratic function, equal differences in the independent variable produce equal second differences in the dependent variable. Example number two. Identify whether the table of values below represents a quadratic function. So again, let us get the differences in the independent variable. 4 minus 3 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 
0 minus negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 minus negative 2 is 1. Next is to get the first differences in the dependent variable, which is y. So negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. 3 minus 0 is 3. 0 minus negative 5 is 5. Next is, so there is a chance that this table of values is a quadratic function since the first differences in y are not equal. Make sure that the first differences in the dependent variable are not equal. Okay, let's get the second differences. Negative 5 minus negative 3 is negative 2. Negative 3 minus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Since the differences in x are equal, and it produces equal second differences in y, therefore, the given table of values represents a quadratic function. Another way of representing quadratic function is by using graph. If you are to toss a ball to your friend, what do you think will be the path of the ball? I will give you 5 seconds to think. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So let's see if we have the same answer. Okay, that's correct. The path of the ball describes a curved path which is in u-shaped called parabola so again the graph of a quadratic function is called parabola so here are some examples of quadratic functions represented by a graph okay it's u-shaped that opens upward and inverted u and it opens downward so you're going to learn more about this in the succeeding lessons. But for now, all you have to remember is the graph of a quadratic function is a U-shaped called parabola. It may open upward or it may open downward. Now, let's wrap it up. A quadratic function is a second degree polynomial. Y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a must not be equal to 0. In a quadratic function, equal differences in the independent variable produce equal second differences in the dependent variable. Lastly, the graph of a quadratic function is U-shaped called parabola. Thank you.